Greetings everyone and welcome to another latest mix of build videos from Monster Hunter World. Today's build will be focusing on a new lance called the Sapphire Stars Lance and crafting a set that will bring out the full potential the weapon has to offer, or try to at least. So the Sapphire Stars Lance is a red E7 lance and comes with an attack value of 437, a healthy amount of green and blue sharpness, 0% affinity of the bat and 180 paralysis unlocked. Now this is a completely new lance introduced to us from some event and from what I've gathered from people reviewing it, it's a 50-50 weapon to use, simply because it doesn't offer much to the table when compared to the fan favourite, such as the Wyvern Ignition Greatsword. Except from his looks, his stats are average at best and outdone by many other lances with better raw damage, better sharpness and better status build up. Although the last part I must admit that can only be compared to the Battle Stinger Freelance as these two are the only two paralysis lance in game. I'm talking about the Battle Stinger Freelance, let's compare it to the Sapphire Stars Lance. The Stinger has an attack value of 460, which is 23 more than the Sapphire Star attack value. It's a rare D6 Lance, which means you can add on 3 augmentation slots with a cheaper amount of streams so needed to fill in each slot. Compared to the rare D7 version, which you're only given 2 augmentation slots, and need to add on an extra 2 more stream slots for filling each spot in. Its sharpness is the same as the Sapphire Star sharpness, and both can't reach white sharpness, so that's a tie between the two. However, with this downside, the Battle Stinger still comes out supreme as it can add on a level 1 and 2 jewel, and can allow you to add something like a sharp jewel to retain its sharpness, while the Sapphire Star Lance doesn't come with any jewel slots whatsoever. Or you can go on and add on a non elementless just for raw damage for the Battle Stinger. The Stinger also comes with minus 20 affinity, which means more dedication is needed to negate the minus affinity, while the Sapphire Star comes with 0, which makes it easy for the user to build up its affinity meter without any sacrifices needed. But once again, this thing comes out on top with 390 paralysis compared to the star's 180 paralysis, which honestly blows the star out of the park. Overall, the stinger is a better paralysis lance, which gives you more bang for your buck, and sadly makes the star a subpar lance to use for paralysis lockdown or raw strength. Now, I could end the video here and make you go on your merry way, but then I haven't really gotten to the juicy part of the video, and that is actually to make the weapon viable. So today I've created a build that focuses on improving its weakness as much as possible, so we can try and make the weapon viable and something worth using if you don't want to farm for the stinger. So here are the following jewels and gear used. I have attack boost 4 to increase its base attack value and gain an affinity boost of 5%. This doesn't need to be any higher as any more is generally a waste in slots that could be used for increasing its affinity instead, which gives you more damage when stacked. Next I have weakness exploit 3 for the plus 50 affinity upon monsters weak points. Guard 3 to allow me to block monsters attack successfully with less chances of being pushed back, although if you're really great at lancing, then you could use Evade Extender 2 instead to increase your back hopping spacing so you can close the gap quicker and do more damage. And then use your counter shielding to block major attacks, but only advise this if you're more or less a pro at lancing, which I, I am not. Next we have Stun Resistant 2 and Critical Boost 2, which are both from the Tower of Corby chest piece, I'm probably using the chest piece to gain access to the critical boost skill, so I can increase my critical chance to damage when it does activate, which also helps for slightly increase my damage output. Now I only have it at plus 2, but you can sacrifice a maximum of my jewel to get it at plus 3, since your affinity is going to be moderately high once you also put in a affinity og. Although I found that having it at plus 2 and then getting my affinity up even more to around 70 to 80 plus still provides a substantial boost. Nothing too crazy, but just good still. Next we have Paralysis Attack 2, which I only went up to level 2 as I didn't have a spare Paralysis Attack Jewel, and the amount of Paralysis you build up is generally enough to allow you to Paralyze monsters up to 2 times, or maybe 3 depending. I also didn't see the point in getting it to plus 3, as it's quite a small boost to begin with, and replacing it with more damage focused or quality of life skills such as health boost, medicine, steed fast, or even an extra attack up would give you more mileage in the meantime since the set is flexible. Next we have Wide Range 2, which is part of the Lanustra Gloves and it's helpful for helping your teammates out, but the gloves are mainly used so I can use the level 2 and 3 jewel slots to fit in maximum might 2, and gain 20 plus affinity into my build. Lastly we have Free Element 1 and Handicraft 1, which are both from the Corby Waste and used for the jewel slot levels so I can fit in a Tenderizer jewel and a Paralysis jewel. Overall this will give you an attack value of 499, a defense of 425, your affinity reaching 75% if Queen's Exploit 3 activates, and can be pushed to 85% if you spend a affinity arc onto the weapon, and 210 paralysis, which is around 21 paralysis per hit when it does activate. I also recommend you augment your weapon to at least have affinity, attack, or health up, depending on what you want to get more out of the weapon. So going with attack up and affinity if you want to hit harder, or affinity and health if you want to stay in the fight longer. 
Now, to be honest, this is the best I can honestly get the weapon to be, where it's flexible in terms of damage, but still gives you room for improvements in the near future. If I had a spare Iron Wall Jewel or two, I could switch out my Bow of Head for something like the Nurge Helm, A or B, and then I could swap the gloves out for the Bow Hazard Y gloves for the two level 1 jewel slots and a level 3 jewel slot, which I can then add in something like another Crit Wall Jewel to max it out, or another Max Might Jewel to max it out. This would then make the set a tad more viable for endgame monsters and make the weapon worth investing for, for all players of all contents. However, that's not the case for me, as RNG loves to shatter my hopes and dreams every damn time. So this is what you can go with instead, if you couldn't do the alternative like I mentioned up above. But my full opinion of the weapon is that it's good to use against monsters that have easy hit weak points, as the damage you do varies between 40 plus, 60 plus to 80 plus damage, with the off chance of proccing paralysis at the same time. It's also an ideal weapon to use if you're someone entering higher rank mode for the first time, and need a weapon that has okay stats, decent sharpness, and little to no investment needed to use it until you make your way through end game. And it also looks great for fashion building if you ever want to be a Dark Souls 3 Lothric soldier. On the other hand, if you want something with a bit more oomph that can carry you well into end game content, then I advise you to use the Battle Sting of Freelance instead. Since the mileage you get out of that weapon compared to the Sapphire Sword Lance it is a lot more better and packs more punch. Plus, it isn't time gated once the event is up. Yes, once the event is up to get this weapon, you won't be able to get it until the event is back on again, which could be a number of months. So it's advised that if you're a collector, get the weapon now while it's active. If not, then by all means, don't worry, just wait till the next come back on. But that is all I have to say for the weapon. The set I have improves upon some of the weaknesses the weapon has, and it makes it useful for in-game. But it's not something worth worrying about and even get as there are alternatives. And I would say it's only worth getting if you're someone that is generally entering higher rank and you need a weapon to help you get into higher rank successfully and clear. Or better off get this weapon just for collectors. But if you don't need the weapon at all and you're not doing fashion or you're not a new high rank player, you can actually just skip out on this weapon because not really you're not really missing out much on this weapon at all. So if you enjoy the content then do leave a like a sub and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I do upload, as I would appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you all again soon.